You've got mail. Good morning, everybody. You're tuned to Computers 2K now on the Nissan Communications Network. I'm Amnon, your host for the next hour, along with Gal. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Um, looks like it's just the two of us. Just the two of us. Just the two of us, yep. Um, our number is 919-518-9773, Computers 2K Voice on Skype. And today's show is made possible by vMix Software and is sponsored by Tom Sinclair of Live Streaming Gear. It is cold outside, man. Cold? Literally. I was last night in uh, Roanoke, Virginia. Yeah. And um, about when when the sun started to go down, it was really windy there. So, yeah, it was a bit chilly, but I wouldn't say cold. Well, it, it was in the 50s, upper 50s this morning. Really? 74 outside uh, no yeah. no so, so uh, yeah 60 yeah it, it, it'll rise but yeah oh yeah suddenly, it will but it yeah. was that's what I was saying it was when I got up it was cold I mean I'm letting guy out and it's jeez yeah um, by the way your volume is still down so I, I upped it from here okay I, I, everything is set up. Yeah, like normal. I understand. Yeah. That's all right. So, anything special happened this week? Anything special happened this week? Last week. Yeah. No. Um, not that I know of. I haven't followed the news, and I've been knee-deep in work, so I haven't noticed anything. Um, the, I mean, it, we're, we don't do things manually with thinking anymore. We let computers do a lot of the stuff that we used to do as, as humans. So thousands of Tennesseans were illegally denied Medicaid and other benefits due to programming and data errors in an algorithmic system the state uses to determine eligibility for low-income residents and people with disability. I mean, what happened to inviting somebody over to the office of the, 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 the department and actually look them in the eyes, see what they talk to them, you know? what? It, it what is that algorithm? What algorithm? I'm I'm sick. I'm 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 disabled. You let algorithm decide that. That is uh, everything is everything is that way today. Yeah, I know. That's that's the problem. That there are things that you know. You can't go by by a computer. You need, I mean, you can let the computer help you um, build up a case after you sit down and you feed the correct data into it, and they tell you, okay, this person will get that much or that much. But to deny because of an algorithm, that is amazing. Just amazing. What I don't get is, well, I don't know. It's um, just I, I haven't read the article, so yeah. I don't know the details. Uh, I mean, it's clear that a lot of initial screening about everything is done by yeah. machine today. Yeah. Um, when it comes to medical choices, it's always a problem. I wonder though. 
what what they're talking about in terms of glitches because i'm i'm if i'm looking at uh the same uh headline as <laughs> as you are mm-hmm. right they say uh, uh the loitron medicaid system are riddled with glitches that can cost millions and take years to fix Sheesh. now i this is not a technical analysis of a problem right <laughs> <laughs> so I don't understand, and uh it's a twelve minute uh piece to read at this point, so I don't know if I'll find anything fast, but it sounds like a bad project, right, and not necessarily it's like just something that was run in a in a very poorly manner because software today is also known to be rather accurate. when it's designed correctly and can be updated properly right yeah and when it's now, implemented correctly too now yeah. what it what it's saying here it's Medicaid Medicaid is because it's a, a a federal program right then every I don't know every session of Congress can create a new new uh, stuff yeah new stuff there so yeah Something needs to be up to uh, really up to date all the time, and if that's not the case and if the syst- if the if the people running this rely on the system exclusively and there's no other way of reviewing that, then yeah uh, rub it out out and uh start working manually <laughs> well i mean it it's it, you you need to take. I don't think that computers are good enough in making a decision for you to say, "Yeah, this person is okay, this person is not okay, unless you entering, can he walk? Yes, can he talk? Yes, does he seem uh, yes yeah and and you put all that stuff in and say, "Well, in this case, if everything is yes, then you can't yeah i mean the the person doesn't." Uh, deserve to get this he's okay he can work he can talk he can he can drive he can sing he can you know um Eleanor is saying the algorithm is for eligibility okay so right. I mean well how does a computer know whether you're eligible or not is it according to where you live is it according to well, bad- I mean it's fed a bunch of details provided right. usually okay. by by the the patient themselves right uh and True. Uh, and it might be that even there's no change in the actual status of these details but something changes in the algorithm calculating the details right and so what happens is That person gets hurt because something in the algorithm changed mm-hmm. and not necessarily correctly absolutely the problem is auditing that testing that with software everything is about testing it right mm-hmm. um, how many times we said nobody QA'd anything because they just let the audience uh, QA the uh, the, the, <laughs> the program when it comes to healthcare when it comes to finances right the effect is is felt you know what i have i have a a a, pro- a problem of my own that i'm dealing with for months okay mm-hmm. um everybody knows uh, everybody in the state who took a mortgage right knows that after a year or so right that mortgage is being passed to another uh yeah it's being passed along they they sell these mortgages uh back and, and forth back bank, yeah. right And so my mortgage is now, I think, in its third or fourth uh, handler of the mortgage, okay? In 2023, okay? Two years ago, um, uh, uh, a year and a half ago, at mm-hmm. the beginning of 2023, my mortgage passed to, to a bank. And it was just about the time where the insurance on my home was supposed to be renewed. Okay? Okay. During that transfer, they did not pay the renewal fees and that, <laughs> oh, and, and that insurance uh, policy got canceled okay uh the moment that happened i got uh, i I saw a notification that my insurance has lapsed right 
uh, from the insurance company that it's canceled and not paid. And I reached out, and they gave me a new policy, and I sent it to the bank. And I thought that everything was 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 you know was settled. Mm -hmm. The thing is, I took care of it about a month and a half or two months after it lapsed. Mm -hmm. And the coverage they gave me was uh, continuous. They said you were only losing one like one month or something like that. So by law, we can uh, set it up as continual. You just need to pay uh, since January. Mm -hmm. said, okay. So because I did that, the bank system has internal logic of its own that's saying if a policy is filed, and it has started more than 30 days ago, then the auto pay never kicks in. Okay? So mm -hmm. a bunch of time passes, and that new policy that I've sent them never goes into effect and gets canceled. <laughs> now, the bank has on file that a policy has been filed. Mm -hmm. But internally, it, wasn't, it was never eligible for payment. The thing is, nobody told me, and nobody told the insurance company that uh, nobody asked the insurance company, "Do you need this paid?" And so, because it was a brand new policy, I didn't even get a notification that that new policy got canceled because it never got activated. Right. right. A year passes, twenty twenty four, beginning of twenty twenty four, and I get mail from the bank saying you weren't covered you're not covered so we're going to issue cover uh, our own insurance to cover you and i call in and we track the problem and again i go through and, and this is all i feel like deja vu right i yeah. remember doing this. and later on after after, after uh, i figure out everything and yes I, I i really did do this and i find and i track all of the records that i have but I say, okay, so I, I talk with the insurance company. This time they cannot provide me continual coverage. So I lose all of the, um, um, all of the discounts that go with uh, uh, the more time you have an, an, an insurance yeah. policy, the less it costs, right? Well, so, uh, well, with, yeah. with, with the program that they gave me, okay. all, of the ref all, of the, all of the discounts that are or you have this for a long time, you've never uh, claimed anything, uh -huh. then you get discount. So I lost about uh, the calculating, like how, how much time it's going to take me to get to that uh, discount level again. I, I, it cost me about $4,000. Okay? Like, like, yeah, in the long run, it, it'll happen, but it's like now I don't have the... So, so that's troubling, number one. I go through the process, I talk with the bank, I make sure they get the the the, the policy, I mm -hmm. make sure that it's actually paid this year. And I'm thinking in my mind, okay, that's it. But that's not it. Because a, a year has passed, and because by law, I, 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 I'm sorry for all of the details, but I'm getting to the point. Oh, that's because, interesting. Because, yeah, because a year has passed, and because by law, Coverage for a mortgaged uh, um, asset must be continual. The bank, unlike the insurance company, can uh, issue uh, uh, insurance for 2023. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling them, damage between 2023 and 2024 will never happen again. Right? It's like, fine. I get the law. I got screwed by the law here. Mm -hmm. Right? But you screwed me, so you go pay that. Because they want another $4,000 just, and they pulled uh, another $4,000 on my escrow account, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because they said that we need to pay that bill, that insurance bill from, from uh, 2023 to 2024. And I'm in back and forth with them about l getting them to acknowledge that they dropped the ball, right? Um, the first time I talked with somebody, um, after I saw the bill increase, so 
because right now they're charging me like because of that additional fees that I it's like I, I'm paying five hundred dollars more a month just to pay my mortgage, and that doesn't matter. It's like yeah. uh, an increase of uh, of thirty percent. It's like unbelievable, right? Uh, and so, <clears throat> um, the last time I talked with them was a a, a week ago, and. They said that they reached, like, every time it goes back to a research team in the background, and I'm waiting for for um, basically a refund. Uh, they have a, a name for it, a corporate advance or something like that. Uh, and, uh, and I get these kakamimi answers, right? And they're focusing on 2024. Like, you gave us this, uh, the, uh, this uh, insurance plan a year or later. And I said, yeah. <laughs> but why did you get it a year later? And I go through the timeline again. And I got to the point where the person I'm talking, the problem is the person I'm talking with, right? Here's the problem. The person I'm talking with, they can do nothing. Like this much. Yeah. They can see the details. They can explain to me what somebody in the background might be saying, right? Uh, they can file my claim and send it inwards and have somebody call me later, sort of, right? But they can't make decisions. Right. They can't say, yeah, you're right, right? Uh, or even if they say, they'll say, I, 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 I understand what you're saying. This seems strange to me. I'll send it. Somebody will answer, right? That's the limit. But the last time, the lady that I talked with, the answer that she got was, you need to tell him he's not getting it, right? Huh? And... Whatever she got hooked on uh, was wrong because every time I go around through all of the timeline and all of the details, the one point she's saying is at the point where uh, we don't need to, to let you know that we didn't pay you, right? That's, that's the, that was the answer. It's the insurance company's uh, responsibility to tell you that uh, your policy has been canceled. But they did, right? like it's like a cat and mouse now mm -hmm. of course the last talk which was a harsh one was the first time i actually uh um uh, blew up i well blowing up yeah i definitely blew up but uh i i i i've been doing support right on the side of the of the support team for so long that i know that just being um and being a mean will never work. Right. Uh, that's th there's no way of getting support that way. It doesn't matter if you if I'm right, right? Because the support person, as I said, can't do anything except communicate. So I need to make them my advocate. Uh, uh, but what I did is I did I did threat threaten with litigation. I so I told them I, I, it doesn't matter what you say at this point. I know I have a case, right? It's just I don't want to go through uh, going through a lawyer and, and the legal system just because to prove something that is clear as day. So if you guys want to pay for lawyers, then okay, then we'll go that way, and you'll also pay for my lawyer, right? Because there's no way in hell that I'm going to pay that this is going to fall on me on the long run. It's painful enough that I need to pay it right now just so, you know, the bills won't. Uh, uh, so, so I got... I, I I got a response a couple of days later that they're looking into it again, right? Something in, in the way I presented all of the details shook them. The problem is, and this is the problem we're going back to the same, same thing with the Medicaid stuff, right? If you get a refusal because the system decided, like for me, that 30 days passed and you don't pay, mm -hmm. right? Now you need to fight... Uh, a system of people that is being driven by whatever the software is telling them. And unless accountability is presumed 100% of the time by the company making the decision, right? That, will, that won't happen. So automatically, people just get, and you need to be diligent and understand your position. So, Every single one who's getting refused by the system needs to fight the system. And that is always a hard thing to do because the system is established and it works. And not only that is if you look at the statistics, right? 
let's say 1% isn't getting what they're supposed to. That means 99% are getting. Yeah. Right? So even that, but that 1%, that can be tens of thousands of people. Yeah. Right? And that's the problem. It's like these, these statistics are being trusted much more than the people involved. I mean, right? the, so, you, uh, go ahead and read what's in the chat. I mean, Eleanor's got some good points. But the thing that I would tell somebody who's arguing with me about this from the bank, because they're trying to cover their asses. And the insurance also trying to cover their asses. They're not looking for your uh, interests. They're looking for their own interests. But I would say, hey, I'm paying you every month to put money in escrow so you exactly. will pay it. So I'll tell that you what. Exactly my point. Stop this. I will manage the money. I will open That's an all account. Fine. And That's all fine. But the problem is, right? You, you, first of all, you're completely correct, and that that is exactly my point. I'm telling them, right? Yeah. I chose to pay extra, right? It cost me a few hundred dollars to open the escrow account when mm -hmm. I opened it, in knowing that this will give me peace of mind. Exactly. Right. And then she said, uh, and and the answer I got, an escrow account is just an account. I said yes, but I'm paying for somebody to manage that account. Right. Right. I am paying something, and I chose to do that. And the alternative would have been that I would manage this payment and mm -hmm. I will make sure that I am right. doing that, right? And and apparently in the U.S. banking system, that is the only way to do it. Yeah, because right? they, they, you don't so have a choice. When you, when you drop the ball, you're screwing me. Yeah. You don't take responsibility. Now, I told her, mistakes will happen. And I have no problems with mistakes happening. And if we, this was fixed in 2023, it would have cost me, I don't know, 50 bucks or something like that, which would, be, would have pissed me off, but the damage is a small wound that doesn't keep on bleeding, right. right? And what you did is you cut off an arm and didn't patch it. Yeah. Right? And, and that's the thing. It's like, uh, and, and, and no, it's not okay because I was on top of everything that I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, the, uh, it was an automated system where I sent the um, insurance uh, policy information. Right? Mm -hmm. And that automated system sends you a receipt. And in that receipt, there is a line saying, no further action is required. <laughs> right? And I'm saying, that is what I'm getting. And the, the next thing I'm getting is just a regular monthly statement. Yeah. But yeah, I didn't look if the payment went out there or not. But then again, I should be notified when there is a problem. And you guys decided there's no problem until there was a problem. Yeah. You created the problem, never notified me, right? So, yeah. Yeah, and they're trying uh, to cover their butts. That's what they're course, trying to do. Of course. So, yeah, fighting a system is hard, and when it's about your health, is it's terrible. Um, and I, I think the main problem is that even if you talk with a person in the system, they don't understand how this works, right? And getting, getting them to acknowledge that whatever they're working with might be glitchy, might be uh, doing the calculation wrong, it's not their task to say that. It's not their task to test it. And so you are, you are working against a huge machine that doesn't understand itself, right? <laughs> and that's when things break. That's yeah. when, that, yeah. I mean, that's bureaucracy. That's exactly what bureaucracy is, right? Yeah, Helen, we're saying banking and computers is worse than the medical industry. Yeah. I I I would hate I hate the 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 broad stroke. They there's a lot of pain involved with it, right? And I think that without computers, the pain would have been even more, right? Um, uh, when it's true that we rely on computers, but Overall, 
that reliance is beneficial to us. In the great do, scheme of things, right, yeah. Right, in the great scheme. If you look, if you look at the, big, the broad, biggest, bigger picture, right, it's true that there are things that need to be solved. But I think the, the solution is actually equipping, the solution is transparency, basically, right? That's the solution when you look at software specifically. Transparency, transparency in data and transparency in software. That is the actual solution. It's hard to achieve because everything, all of the data is human driven, right? Right. And so uh, uh, with human driven, you have error that you need to clean up that the computer doesn't know how to deal with, right? And so you need also a mechanism to identify error. And with transparency, also comes lack of privacy. And when it comes to the individual data, right, uh, you can't expose all of the data you're basing things of because that individual data is very important to keep safe. So one of the, uh, one of the guidelines is, okay, so let's at least make the logic, everything about the logic, let's make it transparent. What does it mean transparent? Transparent means completely auditable, completely available to scrutiny and critique. And when that doesn't exist, then we, are, we, are, uh, we have a problem. Um, when something is government run, like government laws are in place, then I think that should have complete transparency about how the system runs, right? Because it serves the people. And the, the people should have access. I mean, people have access to uh, public records of blueprint, blueprints of buildings, right? Uh, of government buildings. So stuff like that, right? That needs to be, that's the same thing. This is a government system. Even though it's run by Deloitte, the logic of how it makes its choices, that needs to be uh, exposed. That needs to be clear. And when it's clear, it can also get input from the outside on how to fix problem or where are where are problems that needs to be fixed uh, i well, think eventually that's the solution i i really hope we'll get to that someday but someday at this point at this point the united states is not going that direction at all so now and talking about scrutiny and such the new york times analyzed over three Point two million telegram messages from sixteen thousand two hundred and twenty channels. Their conclusion: Telegram offers features that enable criminals, terrorists, and gr grifters to organize at scale and to sidestep scrutiny from the authorities and that Telegram has looked the other way as illegal and extremist activities have flourished openly on the app. Now, I'm not following the thing with the Telegram CEO who was arrested in France and all that. Do you? Uh, just a bit, just, just in a very, very limited way. Um, I don't know about all of the counts, the only count that was of interest to me uh, is the use of encryption was part of the uh, lawsuit. Well, there's a lot of other Yeah, uh, but messages. the reason that is of interest to me is uh, does that make WhatsApp end-to-end -end encryption right. yes, that's uh, what I mean. yeah. problematic? Does that make Signal illegal? Right? Uh, with Telegram, there is an additional aspect to um, to the end-to-end -end encryption communication. They're a hosting server as well. Everything you upload there is hosted by them. So it's not just about end-to-end -end encryption with, let's say, with Signal, where the data basically lives on the servers in transit and eventually just lives in the phones uh, in the user's phones and the moment they erase that data or lose the encryption key which is 
it's practically the same. They lose access to the data. Mm -hmm. It's gone. Um, yeah. Signal also does not keep any logs, uh, any transactional but, logs, more than it needs to. But, so, but keeping logs doesn't help. Of course the, it helps. Law, law enforcement? That oh, is, oh, okay. Yeah. I see what you mean. Law enforcement wants the logs. That's what they, they need to start with. It's like... Uh, where was this cell phone at what time, right? So who talked with who at what then, time? Then in that That's case... That's metadata that can provide a lot of detail in an investigation. So in this case, WhatsApp and Signal are even worse than Telegram. No, WhatsApp... Uh, WhatsApp first of all, WhatsApp and Telegram are pretty much the same. Yeah, it's the same company yeah. too. No, no, no. Right? WhatsApp and Telegram. I'm comparing who, WhatsApp and Telegram. Who is the, the, who owns Telegram? I Telegram thought, was that Russian guy. Two different companies. Oh yeah, WhatsApp okay, yeah, that's Telegram. right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Never mind. Yeah. Signal and WhatsApp they use uh, they use the same communication. So the the end to end encryption um, uh, technology used by WhatsApp was developed by Signal. Okay, uh, and um, uh, but WhatsApp also has so WhatsApp hosts the chats. So not the not the media. The media stuff they only host metadata about the media, and everything is on the phones. Uh, but the chats themselves, the communication themselves, is hosted by WhatsApp. Signal doesn't do even that. Right. The only thing that Signal actually has in their storage is encrypted copies of contact lists. Okay. But they cannot see those encrypted copies without the encryption key that you provide. So only your phone can retrieve that data and do something with it, with the right encryption key. So even if they give that entire database to a law enforcement by... by uh, court order. Uh, by a court order, uh, they can't do anything with it. Like yeah. The NSA can't break that. It's like uh, the encryption is 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 tough. The problem, uh, so, so the part you quoted right was Telegram provides um, uh, allows criminals, terrorists, etc. Features right? it allows features that enable what criminals, about, terrorists, and what others. about uh, what about uh, transportation? Um, criminals use cars. Um, yeah, true. Right. Then, and I don't think law enforcement can remotely control whether the car drives or not, and they can't track them uh, unless they actually see them. Mm -hmm. uh, what about roads? Criminals use roads, right? And uh, <laughs> what else? They send letters. They might be sending letters. What if you can't? You don't know what's inside the envelope. Yeah. Uh, so all of that is, while it's true that criminal abuse. Uh, uh, abuse a system that allows them to hide. Uh, but that doesn't mean that keeping private is unlawful. And that is the main problem in the discourse. Europe today is getting, France specifically in this case, and I think it was also Denmark who fi uh, filed laws that are talking about and by the way, the U.S. went through a phase like this uh, at the beginning of 2000s, if I remember correctly, um, of trying to say, you you want encryption? No problem. But we as the government, we need to be, have backdoors, right? Stuff like that. That's what they want to do. And that is, what, that is part of what's being fought. And they're doing it through criminal cases or terrorist cases where... It's hard for law enforcement to gather intelligence, and we understand that, right? But that doesn't mean that it's okay to infringe on personal rights. Right, uh, and that's kind of well, hard yeah. to... It's a hard balance. Yeah. But I am... I, 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 I actually think that allowing privacy, while it does allow criminal actors to act, right? Criminal actors they do not interact with the real world, then they're just playing a game. OK? 
Okay. So law enforcement needs to focus on where those interactions happen in the real world and figure out how to prevent those and figure out how to manage those. But the answer is not totalitarian control. I, that can't be the answer because nobody wants to live in that environment. So it's, it's, no. al it's always a problem. It's always yeah, a problem. it is. It is. And I don't think it's going to be solved anytime soon. Well, it's not going to be solved by lawmakers. That, one, that part I can tell you. Um, did you ever use, I'm sure you do, the, those contactless cards to, to, to get okay. into the... So this article goes, a significant backdoor in millions of contactless cards made by China-based Shanghai Fudan Microelectronics group allows instantaneous cloning of RFID smart cards used to open office doors and hotel rooms around the world. They, yeah. They're saying that it's very easy to clone them because of a back door. I thought, thought it was known that it was easy to clone them. I but... Know. I think most of them are not designed in any sophisticated way. Our they're not supposed to. The, 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 the bank, I mean the bank, the hotel should be able to create a new one if somebody loses it. And if somebody loses it, then... Well, the, the one from the hotel, yeah. that, is, that is another thing. That is not even an RFID. That's just a magnetic, uh, a magnetic uh, a stripe. Right, that is just writing a, a, a just writing numbers onto a magnetic stripe. The RFID cards uh, they can be a bit more complex because you can actually put an encryption key there, and and what happens with an RFID is when you put it next to the reader, there's actual code in the well, not necessarily RFID, but uh, a credit card with a chip. Mm -hmm. That's what happens is when it gets uh, when that uh, R, that the RFC communication happens, it receives energy from that communication, and it can run an algorithm. So it doesn't necessarily answer with the same answer every time, but it answers with a response to a function call, and so it's getting I don't know some sort of code. Right, and it's returning something that goes through the uh, algorithm in that card, and it, you get an answer. And if those match, then, then you. it's okay. But if you do not, the card cannot know in advance that it has the right answer, unless it has the right algorithm. Yeah. Okay. okay? So if there's a backdoor, that's where the backdoor plays a, a, a part. If there's some way to call a function that tells it, uh, uh, give me the algorithm, right? Then we have a problem. If it's easy to access, if, if, it's, if it's not hidden, if it's not behind some sort of encryption key that is not like a stateless one, right? It's just it's like always the same encryption key or something like that. The moment you have that back door, that's a problem. So I'm guessing that it's something like this, that there's there's a way to call the card and say, hey, give me the code, right? And then you can clone it. Uh, and that shouldn't be part of the design. I wonder, uh, I mean, everybody, after a news article like this, everybody will feel it if suddenly, I don't know, uh, they said it's mostly about uh, re-entry. So yeah. probably credit cards, they're working differently. There's probably had been a, a lot more scrutiny into the chip that goes into there uh, compared to what offices buy to install on their doors. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm guessing uh, um, industrial espionage has been using it for a long time. For a long time, and, yeah. Uh, and and son, suddenly somebody noticed. Yeah. All right. Uh, did you ever use Kaspersky? Their utilities. I know of them. I've yeah. tried them. I, I did. I, I've 
the only the only time I tried them was pirated copies of it just to see how it worked. Right? Um, I hate. Um, I hate no, there was a lot of there was a there, they had a lot of utilities that were free that you can use. I mean, I remember using, them. but a lot of people also subscribed to the thing. So now that Kaspersky is banned, it says that they have reached an agreement to transfer its U.S. customers to Ultra AV, a Boston-based antivirus provider. The move comes in the wake of the White House ban on Kaspersky products. Under the deal, U.S. users will remain will maintain their existing subscriptions and receive reliable antivirus protection through Ultra AV, which will offer additional features such as VPN and identity theft protection. Kaspersky will contact customers in the coming days with instructions for activating their new accounts. So. If you subscribed and you paid money, you are not out of it. I mean, you you're not out of the money. You're not. It's 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 not like oh well. Uh, so you you should get some kind of a uh, an email from Kaspersky, which will tell you how to activate the Ultra AV um, subscription. I mean, it's it's good. It's it's people are not going to be left holding the bag. Interesting. What, I'm just what, thinking about the backdoor deals, the back the back yeah. back office deals between yeah. Ultra AV and the government, and yeah, because I, I I've never heard about them, so I I, I didn't either. I've never yeah. heard about Ultra AV. But it's fine. It's a small company, so that will give him a boost. Um, Verizon announced a deal to acquire Frontier Communications, an internet service provider with about 3 million customers in 25 states. Verizon said the old cash transaction is valued at $20 billion. Verizon agreed to pay $9.6 billion and is taking on over $10 billion in debt held by Frontier. Verizon said the deal is subject to regulatory approval and a vote by Frontier shareholders, and it's expected to be completed in 18 months. Um, they have, I mean, Frontier has fiber going different places yeah. and that will give Verizon an added, uh, coverage and it's probably a, a big write off for them. Yeah. Yeah. I've the, the the part where you pay money to get so much debt is always <laughs> amazing to me in capitalism. Yeah, and from from a company like this also, you know, that's that that is yeah. I'm I'm not saying it's wrong or nothing. It's, no, I it just always mind boggles me. That's all. It's like, do you use the this, unintuitiveness of that? Do you use Discord? Yes. Do you upload files? Um, I don't. Maybe once or twice, not like. So it uh, says regular. that Discord has reduced the upload limit for free users from 25 megabytes to 10 megabytes per file. Sounds legitimate, completely legitimate. Yeah. For for what it for what it used for communication, it shouldn't be bogged down by by the upload. They're already providing so much in terms of bandwidth. Um, because they are primarily voice, right? And they're voice and video primarily today. Oh. Uh, along alongside chat, right? But like voice is what drives their audience. Uh because um it's it's chatting while gaming basically. Oh gaming, yeah. So um yeah. Sounds, Talking about sounds very legitimate. Gaming 
I mean, I, I, I wrote this down because I figured somebody would have. PlayStation Hero Shooter. Con Hero Shooter Concord. You, you familiar with that? Did you ever hear about that? Sounds like a game. I'm looking it up. Was staking offline on September 6, 2024, and all players will receive a full refund, Sony announced Tuesday. So they took the game off. I mean, there wasn't much in there other than this information. But I figured if Nick was here, he probably. Well, it sounds like. It was like uh, some sort of an attempt uh, to run two weeks. It ran for two weeks. That's it? That's what it seems. Interesting. Hmm. All right. Well, it's fine. If you, if, if you're one of those that, uh, subscribe well, I don't to know it. what's behind the drama, but yeah, no. you will. If... Uh, we have seen, we have seen something like this happen, but not in two weeks, right? If you look at, um, what what was the name? The Google Stadia. Oh, right? yeah. Google Stadia ran for what? A few that years. Long, yeah, and then. When they shut down, they uh, refunded everybody who bought something on Stadia, yeah. right? So, yeah. Um, mo mobile phones. What is the biggest controversy about mobile phones? Biggest controversy? Yeah, the biggest. Uh, uh, people there's with... a couple, but uh, there's, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Talk... Radiation. And there's, yeah. Uh, so mobile phones are not linked to brain and head cancers. A comprehensive review of the highest quality evidence available, commissioned by the World Health Organization, has found. I I I buy that. Yeah, I, buy I do that. too. Yeah, <coughs> it was always fear mongering. That part, yeah. I, I mean, what completely... purpose did it serve? I don't understand. Well, I mean, no. when something new comes along, right, and people tapping into collective fear mm -hmm. is the easiest way to gather uh, uh, credibility. Okay? Uh. Uh, hell, I mean, look at the politics in the U.S., right? Trump, when he ran for election originally, right, and and I mean the reason he got elected was because he tapped into fears. Yeah, it, it didn't matter to him whether he was truthful about all of the details, right? He made sure to tap into fear, and that is the most effective way to gather credibility in in quotes, right? It's like you, uh, this this person cares about me because he wants to solve a pain point of mine. That is why autism is linked to uh, um, uh, vaccines, right? That is why uh, MSG is linked to uh, uh, a lot of, uh, because then you have xenophobia feeding that and you have, and, and you create these uh, fantasies, right? That, uh, that are, that now it's your job to prove they're untrue. The problem is there is no way to prove something untrue. You can prove truth. You can prove you can't prove a lack of something. You can prove existence, right? Uh, now we're what thirty for uh, forty years into uh, using cell phones mm -hmm. in, in to, in, yeah. to a certain degree. So there's there's starting to be some data that at least shows we never saw actual correlation. Yeah. If you look at the bo big body of work. Um, yeah. Well, uh, so yeah. On the other side of this, children under the age of two should not be exposed to any screens whatsoever. And teenagers should have no more than three hours of screen 
time a day, according to guidelines announced by health authorities in Sweden. So they're saying if you're less than... Guidelines, that, that part, I don't think it's based on actual study. It's, it's like a choice. They're, they're se- I'm sure they're saying, but I mean the, the study that it's based on, I'm also sure that it's biased. And I'm not saying they're wrong, by the way. I completely agree because the way I see the children in our family that, uh, that are uh, using uh, cell phones and tablets to play mm-hmm. games and sit in front of the TV, I go back and remember myself as a child, right, with a TV. That's the only screen that we had back then, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know you got introduced to TV at a later age than I did, right? But uh, the TV for me was endless if nobody would have put a stop to it. I remember myself as a kid enjoying sitting in front of the screen more than anything, right? And so I can understand completely how addictive this is. Hell, as adults, right, we are glued to this <laughs> uh, so many hours, right? Whether we are doing something productive or not. So most of the time we're telling us that because we're doing something productive with it, then it's okay, right? But if you look, if you do a self-reflection, then most people who use the phone more than a, an hour or two a day can probably cut down and have no negative uh, uh, ramification out of it. So I'm sure that it's true also for kids. I'm interested to see in 10 years' time, right, how... How it panned out. How, yeah. how guidelines like that affect society. Uh, it's interesting. Yeah, you're talking... Uh, but you... but it's, hard, it's hard to come out with the right guidelines here, right? Never! It's so harsh. You, you're you talking about the TV was the only thing. Yeah. And in the beginning, it was just like here. It was only black and white. And it was hardly anything because most of the programs came from the neighboring Arab countries, which w- w- weren't bad. But what I remember one time, there was nothing to watch, and I had an eight millimeter projector, and you could go and rent movies. And I got the projector out, and I got the movie, and I projected it on the TV with the TV off. But it was the the movie was in color, and we and it wasn't you couldn't see it very well. But I mean, you saw a screen. It had some yeah, color, yeah. and it was, you know, I mean, you were trying to, yeah, never mind putting it on the wall, and you can see it perfectly. It's, hey, it's the TV. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, another piece of news here that they said that the U.S. job openings fell in July to the lowest since the start of 2021. And layoffs rose, consistent with other signs of slowing demand for workers. Um, I'd say, I, if, if I may venture here, I'd say a lot of it probably has to do with AI. A lot of companies are cutting down on certain jobs because they don't need, they, they're using AI. I, and, I don't know if that's true because if that's true then there's going to be a surge of hiring in about a year that's my guess well who knows when, maybe when they the will promise be. of ai just falls flat and litigation starts a mass uh because of the mistakes that come with that and yeah from trusting ai completely um yeah i, I don't know it's like we're not there yet i know um, that they want us to be there but we're not there yet uh, about AI, the United States, United Kingdom, and European Union have signed the first legally binding international AI treaty on Thursday. 
the Council of Europe Human Rights Organization said, called the AI Convention. The treaty promotes responsible innovations and addresses the risks AI may pose. So, That's good. what? That is very good. Oh yeah. It it's it, it and and it had to come to that. I mean, somebody has to regulate that stuff. And uh, yeah, no, I'm surprised that uh, it happened. In a way, it's a bit late, but it's still a. It's fine. Rather better early late. for it to happen. So better late surprising. than never. Yeah. Um. There was something here about Alexa. It would be perfectly reasonable to expect Amazon's digital assistant Alexa to decline to state opinion about the 2024 presidential race. But up till recently, that assumption would have been incorrect. When asked to give reasons to vote for former President Donald Trump, Alexa, Alexa demurred. According to a video from Fox Business, that Alexa said, I cannot provide responses that endorse any political party or its leader. That's how it responded to. When asked the same about Vice President Kamala Harris, the Amazon AI was more than willing to endorse the Democratic candidate. Well, I think That's... I think it's mostly because of the uh, 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 last minute uh, change in the race. That's my guess. I don't know. So it just took them they, like nobody realized that they should update the software to include Kamala Harris in the discussion. <laughs> so they... That's my guess. It's like a stupid error. Yeah. And yes, it, uh, it it's damaging. I'm not saying it's not, but it, it sounds to me like that. Like I'm, I'm guessing if it, if you would have asked about Biden, it would said the same uh, as same as about as Trump. Trump, yeah. But Kamala Harris, that that keyword wasn't uh, put in there, and so it was okay to, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, it's sad, but it's uh, it's so sad. It's fun. It's funny. Hopefully, somebody will learn from this and. They'll, I mean, they'll learn and they'll try to do better the next time. Yeah, like, that's that's the thing. More, yeah, this is not AI though, right? Let's N let's be clear. No, it's not. This is yeah. It's just it's just bad programming. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah. this is the uh, uh, the glitch in the Medicaid system from <laughs> from the beginning. This is exactly the same thing, but the repercussion here are minimal compared to uh, denying eligibility on uh, on medica medical aid. All right. Okay. I'm done with stories. Well, it's also the end of the hour. Yep, it is. Yep. You had okay. enough stories. Yeah, I had enough stories. Just enough. Well, I guess we can end the show. Unless somebody in the audience has something they want to ask or uh, contribute here. Eleanor, good stuff there. Eleanor, you asked about transparency uh, and about like doing like a, a larger piece about that. I don't know if I have it in me, but I'll definitely try to research something and, and, and bring something to the show next time. Okay, so thanks, Gal. And I'm hoping that Nick and Katie and Spence are having a grand old time, wherever they are. Well, I think Spence said he won't be uh, in, but... Uh, yeah, but he normally puts in the C2K chat that, hey, I'm on the I way. Think, I think, I think well, last week he told it. Yeah, he said that he was going. He's traveling, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. He went to Alaska yeah. for two weeks. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's, uh, the, the, the memory is okay. It's just that we forget. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> What did you say? <laughs> that's not mine. Yeah. That's uh, Shaikyo Phil. Uh, Let me tell you something about memory. I mean, in the last three weeks when I was taking... Uh, well, you were okay. under the influence of very, very good uh, substances. You, you, I mean, you can't make decisions. You can't, I mean, you, and you say, well, I don't remember this. How, do, I just cut it from 300 milligrams to 200. And it's a completely different world. So, oh, okay. Now you're cutting well, your own drugs, huh? <laughs> Yeah, I'm talking about gabapentin for my pinched nerve. But yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling a thousand, a million percent better. I mean, it's, I don't spend time in bed during the day anymore. Good. Very good. Yep. Very, very good. All right. So, so again, thanks. And good morning, Kathy, Hannah, Nabil, Mac, Norm, Kay, Katie and Dana, Dina, Marty, Eleanor, Sarid, Yaakov and Yael. Thank you, everybody, for tuning to Computers 2K. Now, we hope you enjoyed and maybe learned something from our time together. Remember to practice safe computing. Back up your hard drive and update your virus scanner and change any same passwords where you use them. We'll be back here next Sunday at 9, but you can always reach, reach us at computers2know.com. And uh, Nick and Brian do the Infection Podcast every week on Twitch. Uh, that's for survival games, gaming news, some political. Um, so if you want to watch the live show, just normally it's on Tuesday evening, but they they go back and forth. So just go to infectionpodcast.com and see when the live show for that week is uh, going to happen. And while there, you can download some of the past episodes and listen to them. Have a great week, and we'll see you next week. tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archive section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by StreamingGear.com and DeltaForce.net.